Dave here. How are you? Thank you very much, Peter, for letting me know that the AV is coming through. Uh, it's, it's a big weight off my mind to uh, hear that. Now, today on the show, this is going to be the culmination of what we've done over the last couple of weeks. Now, if you were watching Cole's Gifkin's Chig uh, lecturing, I guess, or, or demonstrations on how he uses his jig, you'll have heard him say that I'm going to redo what I did last week. Now, last week I waffled around and fuddled around for about half an hour, and I actually cut that out of the previous video uh, because it was horribly embarrassing. <laughs> so I've got my head around it, and I'm going to show you just very quickly today, not straight at the beginning, but I will show you very quickly how easy it is. And it took me five minutes. It actually took me five minutes to do this little test, and it worked perfectly. So. For anyone that was confused from last week, I don't blame you. Watch me again. All right, on the show today, on the show today, today is the 20th of June, 2021. Um, a 3D print helmet wall bracket and Festool Traxor non-rotating port from Nick Gibbons in New Zealand. He sent me these over. He just sent me a message. He said, Dave, would you like them? And I said, well, I'll give it a try. Why not? Um, and so I'll be putting them up on the show during on the wall, I should say, during the show, and I'll show you exactly what they're for. Uh, bandsaw and hand plane to reveal the inlay. So it's this piece here. We're going to do this right at the beginning of the show. Under here, now this is one piece of hue and pine. This is Australian red cedar, and I have created an inlay. That's basically a plug that goes into there, and I've nutted it out. I spent ages researching everywhere, trying to get my head around, like the Gifkin's jig, trying to get my head around how it works. I'm not a field dependent guy, so if you give me instructions, I fall apart. I'm a field independent person, so I have to actually reason it out, and then once I've got it reasoned, I'll never forget it. Unless, of course, it's the Gifkin's dovetail, or the path guide system. Remember one time I, I got lost halfway through that as well. But it's, or I hope you forgive me. Um, so, Amazing Rocking Horses by Peter Jensen in Western Australia. This is a guy who started off doing it as a hobby and now it's basically it's a full-time job. The rocking horses he makes are works of art, so you'll have to watch that as well. Uh, the glue up of this uh, digital SLR case that I'm making will happen as well. That's going to be towards the end of the show. And this is the back that I made up for the cabinet. Now you notice that it's got a French cleat just here. That's a 45 degree French cleat. This is marine ply half inch, and this is the back. And I've already done a couple of posts on Facebook and Instagram during the week showing, uh, showing the cleat on the wall and how I fastened it. So stick around and we'll get stuck into revealing this thing first. Oh, and the winner of the eye muffs. Now, let me see. Uh, how can I make this interesting? If your first name starts with R, you are in the running to win a pair of eye muffs. So, a lot of entries, and uh, I'll tell you later on. I'll give you another clue a little bit later on. Now, I have to quickly just check with... No, I'll do that later on as well. I'm just... I waffle, don't I? Oh, I did the video on how I lost weight as well, so if you're interested in seeing that. The other thing, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, you will not be able to enter anything into the chat session. So if you want to be, if you are confused, why can't I put anything in the chat? To put stuff in the chat session, you need to be a subscriber to the channel. I thought it's only fair, you know, people that are looking after me, I'll look after them as well. If you're not interested in doing that, well then, I'm not interested in letting you enter into the chat. Might sound harsh, but you know, got to, it's fair is fair, I think. If you agree, let me know. Um, all right, over to the other unit here. Let me see if I can get this camera possibly around here a little bit further. I should have really brought it in closer earlier, but if I, I had it set up to do the helmet first. Not to worry. Let me see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You agree totally. Good on you, Russell. Uh, we'll do the transition over there and tip it up a little bit. 
Morning, Paul. See, there's another person that's allowed to chat. <laughs> All right, here we go. Around to this side and see if you can see me here. Eye muffs on. Now, as I said, this is the inlay that's already been pushed in and glued in. I did this a few days ago. Now, it's going to look absolutely beautiful and the reveal is magic. I love watching it happen. One of the great things about this is the text is going to have the same grain all the way through it. It's not just different pieces of wood looking different. So even this little bit of bird's eye down here is going to come up in the actual letters. That'll be in the O, I think, where it says Nikon. This is my digital SLR um, display case. Now I have to make sure that this will fit underneath and there it will not, so I have to raise that. The blade is tensioned already. About there. We'll close that off. I do need to get a push block. Give me a second. <coughs> Let me know if you're enjoying this kind of stuff as well because I, I keep on throwing stuff up there and some people tend to like it, some people don't like it. Yeah. Let me know. Now I'm going to bring this over. You might notice I've left about a two millimeter gap in the inlay and I'm going to do a video on how to do this. I have started doing videos again. You'll notice I did the weight loss thing. I did some other videos earlier. Um, I'm, I'm slowly getting back into it, but there is that gap there and that's to guide or kind of guide the bandsaw blade. It works. So I, need, I can come back just a little bit further. The main thing is to not, I repeat, do not cut in to the red cedar part because that would be terrible. I'm going to take it in just a little bit more. There we go. How's that looking? That's good. Just going to check something down the back here. All good. All right. I'm up on. This is going to make a little bit of noise. So you might want to turn the sound down a touch. Pull this back out of there while I start her up. Wait for the dusty to turn on. Beautiful. I love this setup. All right, here we go. Now you're going to see a little bit of it as it happens here, but the big reveal, see that it's not cutting the, the cedar. The big reveal will be when I plane it. Here we go. Wait for the saw to stop. Beautiful. So there's the cut, and there's the inlay. Now wait, wait for the for the good part. <laughs> I change the cameras back. Where are we? All right, I'm going to have a quick read. Greetings, help the trolls. Not raise life, please. Not move Dave. Thank you. Um, the DSLR. Totally agree. No one needs negativity. Okay. Cool. Put that down there. And what do you reckon? Now you reckon that looks good. You wait. Morning, Mark. Uh, what have I got here? I'm going to use a. Possibly go with this one here. Close that. I'm putting a couple of things here to so I can plane it and do it nicely. That there. And one of these guys. About there. I'm just locking it into position. 
on the Stanton bench. How good is this? And you can watch. And I don't know if I'll do this with this camera or whether I'll go to Carl Cam. Let's have a look overhead, see how that goes. Mm. You guys let me know which way you prefer, whether you'd like this view or the view from the front camera. Or I could even set this camera up over here, looking back. Give me a second. Well, that might be nice. Let me have a quick look. Yeah, I think that one's going to be the one. Yep, here we go. This is, I'm going to go this one. Uh, no, there is no glass door. <laughs> look, honestly, Carl, I, I love your stuff. I love your camera, but I think this might be the best view. I'm going to use my plane. So I'm going to set it up. I'm going to look down the top here and just, you think Carl Cam might be best. I just need to adjust this ever so slightly. Making sure that's not going to be in my way. What do you think of that? Carl Cam, okay, here we go. You can see all the shavings coming up. I've tipped them out. That's Hue and Pint. That's, aren't they magic? Look at that. Now I'm going to change the position of this because it's slightly higher and I don't want to be caught by that at all. So I'm going to move it to there. Now, why I've moved that to there instead of here? Because this is slightly higher than that. And I didn't want the back of the plane to be held up as I'm going over. So over here, it's out of the way. Now, you may also notice that instead of just doing a straight cut, I'm angling. What do you think? <laughs> Getting very close here. I'm going to work a little bit at the back. Now the other thing is you might be panicking when I'm going near the dovetails. If I reduce the thickness of the actual dovetails here, it makes no difference to the joint. It's only if I reduce the thickness in the pins that I'd have an issue. You know, remember how the, the jig gets set up. You can shim the pins, but you can't shim the dovetails. Now there's other ways I could have done this. I could have run this over the CNC or put it through the thickness planer. Nearly there. Okay, I think now it's time for sanding. All right, how's the time? Not even a quarter past. Morning, Terence. Okay. I get my sandpaper and a block of wood. Now I'm going to throw on the helmet because I have it, so why wouldn't I? Remember this fellow? I used to wear this all the time. I'm going to start using it again. You get to a stage where you get a bit blasé about things. Do you find that at all? Let's come back to the other. 
on the camera. There we go. My big helmet. <laughs> um, I don't know. A little bit. It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool there. So we'll go to uh, this camera. You turn the helmet on, you'll hear the sound of the, the, um, the thing running. A block of wood and some paper. Now, I don't know which paper. I've just got a block of cedar, it's a sanding block. Let me see, which paper are we going to start off with? I don't want to start too fine. I'll probably start around about... I'm going to try 180 grit paper. See how we go. Now this is the outside of the box, so it doesn't really matter if this is sanded really well at the moment or not, because I've got to sand it after I do the joints. I've already sanded all of the inside of the box. But what I want to do is just show you. How this can come up. I need to go a bit coarser than that. I think I've got some 120 here. You see here I've got glue. Let's go Carl Cam again. So a little bit of glue showing here. That's starting to go. Beautiful. Absolutely magic. So I will take that down even more. There you go. Trying to get it in the take the helmet off and come back to the other camera. Um, whittle wax, yes, yes. That's what I've used on the back. I've used whittle wax on there, Peter. All right, uh, what do you think? Look nice? All right, I'll move these out of the way. Down there, move that guy. I'm just throwing stuff down there out of the way. Ah, right, so if your name starts with R, you're in the runnings, as I said. What's and um, I don't think it's someone in Australia. I don't think it is. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at, I don't know, what do you want me to do next? Do you want me to do, keep on going with this? Or, no, I think I'll leave the glue up till the end. I think I'll leave the glue up to the end. How about we have a look at Peter's rocking horses? You ready? This is just amazing. So Peter makes up these rocking horses in his workshop. You see there's segmented sections all being glued together. And uh, there's a couple of them at different stages of their creation. Uh, and staying on one. Isn't that amazing? And what have we got next? The, uh, the detail he does with the saddles and the stirrups and all of that kind of stuff and the connections to the frame that he makes up and uh, it's looking better all the time. Peter, this is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Ah. Uh. 
Aren't they brilliant? Absolutely brilliant. I gotta get um, a tissue and just get my glasses have got a little bit muck on them. Brilliant, aren't they? Absolutely brilliant. All right, that's better. I can see what's happening in the world again. Um, now, before I do any more on this, I might show you the process on the inlay a little bit. It's not a lot. Let's uh, probably do a video on it so everyone will be able to do it really easily. Um, if you have a CNC, I was talking to someone about CNC machines yesterday and they were saying, you know, they're pretty expensive and not many people have them. And I, I agree, but like all things, take the motor car. It was expensive and not many people had them. And all of a sudden it got into mass production and away they go. Everyone had a car, basically. So I think in a few years time, CNC machines are going to become more and more affordable. You don't need to get a big one like the one I've got. You, a two foot by two foot one would do that easy. So if you're interested in doing a little bit of um, inlay with a CNC, here we go. So what I did was um, I did it all in Vectric uh, V cars and I'll, I'll put that in the video as well, but I just wanted to show you, this is what's called a clearance tool. This is a three millimeter spiral up and there may be a little bit of noise here. So you might want to turn the sound down a little bit. And then from there, um, the clearance tool, because the actual V cutter, the, I use the 60 degree V cutter, if you were to do all your clearance with that, it's only got a really, really tiny point. So it'd be there for a month of Sundays doing all that clearance. That's why you use a larger tool to clear out everything in the bottom. So this is the 60 degree cutter and I did it in two steps. And there's a reason for that. I don't want to break the small tools. So here we go with, this, with the first run. And then I'll show you the, uh, the plug. So that was the body of the material being cut out. Now to create a plug, which is the inlay, you do a mirror image in your software. And so it's like a stamp. Vicky came down here the other day and she saw this, and this was one of my test pieces of the inlay, a different font. And she said, what a great stamp. And I didn't even realize that, you know, if I'd put this on a stamp pad, I mean, it would have given me Nikon spelt the correct way. You know what stamp pads are like when, or, you know, the rubber stamp. As kids, we used to have all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, when I was, uh, had the business, you'd have a stamp that would be the company seal, all that kind of stuff. All right, so this one is the actual plug being cut with the V cutter, clean, doing the final pass, the second pass of the plug on, in the hue and pine. So this is interesting as well. Watch how clean it turns up the stepped section that had been cut with the clearance cutter. So does that make sense now? It's, it's, uh, it's a process, but there's a couple of things in this process that are tricky and a bit hard to get your head around, but I think I've sorted it because the result is fantastic. Uh, and also then we come into the, uh, the actual unit itself. I was ripping the, shelf, the shelves down and I had to rip them at a certain angle. So here we go. So that's 
just some of the machining that I did during the week. I thought you might be interested to have a look at that. All right, what next? What next? Let's screw the, uh, the helmet support up on the wall here. And let's see if it works. Here I'm going on about Nick sending me this stuff over. It might be rubbish. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, camera three, which is this one. I'll tip that up a little bit. So I've already put a mark up there where I want it. And I get the screwdriver drill and a couple of screws. I think I've got some screws here. Yes. All right, this is where the bracket's going to go. Top of bracket. I know there's a stud there because there's small nails here and it's a much harder noise. All of this wall is four and a half millimeter thick cement sheet. So this is inert because it's kind of a shed and it's prone to moisture. I didn't want to have any moisture uh, affecting plywood or anything on the wall. So that's why I went with the cement sheet and painted it with ceiling white. It was nice and cheap to do. All right, let's have a look. I should be able to screw straight in. I think so, I think so. Gotcha. Yeah, lovely. And the next one, you'll notice it was rocking around a little bit on the tip because it, one's a posi drive and the other one's a Phillips head. So they're not really lining up very well. Gotcha. Good. All right, now there's another part that Nick sent and that has got a little lip on it here and it pushes onto this top section. Up, oh, wrong way around, over the other way, that way. There we go, let's see how it goes. I'm curious. Now, you'll see just here is below the battery compartment, that's where it's got a hook on. And this part here, I'm going to let it push against that. First couple of times, I think we've got to be careful while we're putting it on. Get around the back there. And this part down, like so. I'm sure it's going to go on. <laughs> There we go, done. It's gonna take me a little while getting used to putting it up there, but it's there so I can just put it on, put it off, and away it goes. So thank you very much for that, Nick. Let's switch around to here. That's pretty cool. Uh, the other thing, as I said, he sent was something that a lot more people are gonna be interested in, I think, and that is this guy. Now, it's high tech, it's made with a printer, and it's got some tape put around the end of it, and it's designed to go inside instead of this, which can rotate. It's supposed to kind of be semi-hard, but it, it, as in holds its position, but it doesn't. So this one goes in there, and it's, it's not moving around anywhere. That's great. Now it'll take the 27 millimeter uh, fitting in this side and the 36 millimeter fitting on the outside. That's pretty cool. So thank you very much for that, Nick. Uh, I'll put this away over here. That one down there, close that, close her up. All right, and a quick drink. I'm gonna do a quick read again. Russell, I understand what you're saying there, but there's a lot of people that would like to be able to do what I've just done there. And uh, as I say, the money is, is getting cheaper all the time. You know, 
depends on the kind of things. But I understand what you're saying that you you don't have the you don't have any desire to have it. I get that. Um, okay, bandsaw, reveal the inlay, rocking horse. Okay. Next thing I wanted to talk about was the Gifkins jig. Now, last week you saw me make an absolute buffoon of myself. Not hard, you say? Yet. Um, but this week I'm going to show you how I should have done it. Now, you always do the dovetails first. So you see on this side of the jig, it says dovetails this side. You can see the dovetail cutter there. I've, I flipped the thing over to be able to have a nice clean spoil board on the back. Now, this, remember last week, I did the face mark and down to the, down to the edge with chalk. And I had A, B, C, D around the box. So that's what I've done again. Now you'll notice that this is a sloping piece. So this is not as the same thickness as this. So very hard to be able to put this in there with this stop up against there as well, because you know it's not gonna do it correctly. So you use two stops, one stop at one end, one stop at the other end. The red stop at this end, and Cole likes everyone to use the red stop first. Then I should have just flipped it over this way against the black stop. How easy is that? And I made it horribly, <laughs> horribly uh, difficult. It was just crazy. So what I did was I had gone like that and I flipped it this way. Wrong, wrong, wrong. And I'm going to show you why that's wrong. Why it had to be this way and over to this way is correct. Now I have set the jig up on purpose so that the stops are at different points on the template at the bottom here. So let me go through this a little bit more. With the red side, and that is C for the joint, that's up against there. And you'll have a look at the configuration of where these all are. Now you'll notice that the gap on this to the first dovetail, that the distance to the first dovetail is much smaller than the distance to the first dovetail on the other side. And I've done that on purpose to highlight what's going on. Cutting here with the dovetails, with the face mark to there and working on the C joint, when I turn the jig around, and this is a big, big thing, the C joint on the pins is exactly in the same place on the template, back to front, back to there. Do you, do you get that? If I was the other way around, it would have been a debacle. Now, when I flipped the dovetail section over to the black stop to do this test sample piece, I also flipped this over so that the face mark was put pointing back to the stop again. And so the pins there are perfectly in line with the dovetails on the other side with those. Now, how good is it when it's being put together? I'll show you. Does it, give me some feedback here. Does that make sense? So now I've got B and I'm going to put it down like that and I'm going to get this and so I've got the bottom facing my side and I'm going to put that in there and push down and the bottom is perfectly in line now you'll say well Dave hold on yours came up perfectly in line last week as well it didn't it was around about one and a half mil out it's only because I kind of really positioned it well on the jig that I fluked it. It was tinny. So this is the right way to do it. Because you can see the result, it works. Now let's have a look at the C joint. Now you can see that all works and we'll even try in a minute. Take that out. And 
working on the C joint this time. This is the C section. Now, I didn't have to recut everything at all. It was all fine, but as I said, I fluked it. Terrence, so I'm going to put to the outside. So remember, we've got that and that are the outside with the face mark facing down to the base of the box, not up to the, the tapered section. Um, where am I? Just there. Let me slide it in. The bottom. The bottom is absolutely perfect. See that? And you'll notice up the top, I can cut that off like I did with that shelf. I cut the top section off after the fact. But I left it like this because this was a sample piece that had to be the same height at the, at the particular time. So you can see, perfect joint. And I stuffed it up last week. So that's why this week I thought, you know, I was making Cole's jig look way too hard. It is an easy jig to use, but I'd never done it with different heights and with having one piece in the jig at a time. I think Cole showed it with two pieces in the jig against the left and the right stop when he did the uneven height box. I didn't quite get it around my head why he was doing that. But now doing the one piece and then flipping it over it's easy when I see it all like that. Cole, I hope that has, I hope I've redeemed myself. <laughs> Honestly, this is a great jig. And you saw how, look at those joints. They're just brilliant. Absolutely beautiful. Right, now we're going to glue it together. Why not? Why not? Right, move a couple of things out of the way. <sighs> Have we got anybody watching? That's the interesting thing. Tell me some numbers. I don't see the numbers until after everything's happened. I'm wondering whether we're going to have a whole lot of people don't want to watch because they can't make comment. In the chat session, just going to tip all the dust off this because I want to do the glue up here. Gotcha. Oh yeah, Colin and I, <laughs> Colin and I are great friends. I just thought, I'll hide the black eye, will I? <laughs> All right, let's have a look. So I've got that and that. This one is the one that I worked on during the week. And see how it's, I've, I've sanded that down to an insane amount. So it just looks beautiful. Okay, it's just so easy. I made it hard. I, I do this kind of stuff. Only 16 watching. You're kidding me. All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Only 16 watching. That's bizarre. Um, I don't know why. Hello. Cole's calling me. Let me have a quick... Cole, how are you? <laughs> I'm on the show. Haven't, aren't you watching it? Go to my channel. I did. Yep. Well, give me a sec and I'll get a, I'll see if I can find it. All right. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. I'll sort it out. Okay. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'll have a look. Okay. So Cole's just said only 16. Got no notice from YouTube. All right. Let's say that it's not unlisted. Let's say that it's live. Um, I might be able to do this. Second. Um, channel dashboard. Give me a second. Here we are. And content won't be long. I'll just change the settings. There you go. Everyone should be finding it now. Ha. Okay. No reminder from YouTube. Okay. Well, there we go. Let's see. It does say unlisted under the picture. What's it say now? 
You have to go to Facebook to get the link. Well, everyone will be able to watch the recording. Okay, so Dave here, how are you? Welcome to the show. Let me see if we're getting more numbers. I had lots of problems connecting to you this morning. Yeah, you know why? I set it up. I set the time for 9. I, then I reset it as unlisted to 11 a.m. Uh, no, still says unlisted. Have another look. Have another look. It should be, li should be live now. Uh, it's all good fun. I'm going to actually go in there and see if it's saying unlisted or live. See what happens. 19. Okay, the numbers are starting to kick up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 18. Yeah, that's a huge improvement. As I say, people will be able to watch. If you're only just coming in now, go back and watch the recording when I finish the show because I explained everything regarding the Gifkins jig, how I stuffed it up last week, how to do it properly this week. And there you go. So we're going to have some numbers coming now. I had stuffed up how I promoted this actual show. Uh, it's been a great day. <laughs> All right, I'm going to close that one. And close that one. Okay, and everyone's coming in now. All right, go back at the beginning of the show and I show you how I did this. And I show you how I did this. And all the other stuff, I show you things that people have sent in. I show you cutting the, uh, doing the reveal on, on this stuff. Another learning curve. Oh, yeah. There's always something out there. I wrote myself a list this morning, as a matter of fact, to make sure I get it right in future. I'm sure the numbers are going to start picking up. All right, let's do the glue up. That's the thing that everyone was holding off for. And they said, I won't watch the show until we do the glue up. Now, also, if you're only just tuning in, if you're a subscriber to the channel, you can enter stuff in the chat. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, you can't put anything into the chat. You have to be a subscriber to be able to enter into the chat session. Just one of those things I'm doing at the moment. All right, let's do this glue up. Get some, uh, which one do we go with? I'll use this. And a block of wood and some clamps. Where are we? Thanks, Cole, for getting in touch with me and letting me know that it wasn't live. So it's that one and this one. All right. What are the numbers now, guys? Let me know as they're coming along because I can't see them again. I've just turned all that part off. The Block of wood over here. No, I won't use the hue and pine because that'd be terrible. All right, glue. Whoop! Rattled. <laughs> Thirty-one. Good morning, Jared. Okay. Put some glue on this. Don't need a heap. And a brush. Pretty sure I had one here. And climbing slowly. Well, there you go. Now, if you remember, when Cole puts his jobs together, he holds the inside of the box. Now, I've got the sliding um, dovetails here. That's the inside of the box. Good afternoon, you all. I hope to find you well. Good morning, Wayne. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the outside joint. Not too much. Oh, sorry, on the outside of the box. So I'll do that all the way down here. And that's another embarrassing thing, isn't it? Ah, oh, well, live and learn. So I'm putting the glue 
towards the back of the box. To the outside of the box, I should say. I'm going to do this one and then I'll slide the pins into it. So I'm doing the section with the dovetails first. The reason being, let me think of a good reason. <laughs> uh, the reason being the, uh, I'll put it down and I'll push the other, the pins into it. Now these are really strong joints that don't need a lot of glue. And as soon as you put the glue on, it starts to, start, starts to expand the timber already. Okay, so let's push those two together. This is, this is great, I love it. Put that over there for the moment. This is easy for me to follow because I've got the rebate in the back of the box there. So the rebate's got to line up. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put a tiny bit of glue on there, on the pins, towards the outside. This can be boring. I get that, but it's got to be done, and it's something we all do. There we go. Push this one in. Now this avoids the need Come on. Just that last little bit. You hear it go in? All right, do the other end. Let's have to watch the 45 miss later on. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Okay, this one is there, so I'm holding the inside and glue on the outside. Um, yes, that is the inside. It's such a good way to do it, Cole. I bet you Cole's not even watching at the moment. He would have gone back to see if I'd done it properly or whether I'd stuffed it. Again. Ah. Won't be long. Actually, it's as long as it takes. I'm not going to make apologies for it. I'm holding the inside again. Doing that side. Now I'm using Type Bond 3 because it's got a longer um, open time. This gives me about nine minutes, I think. A little bit more on the end grain. Doing the gluing this way stops me having to put tape on the inside. You don't have squeeze out everywhere. Down you go. Flip her over and push down on the floor. It's catching on something there. Oh, that's right, it wasn't lining up properly. Beautiful. Looking good. All right. Now I'll glue the other one. 
holding the inside again. Oh, we're going to do this all in time. This is going to be great. Gluing the outside. And then when we put the clamps on it, you'll go crack, crack, crack as it pulls it up. It's funny how the, uh, the job is when you put it together dry in comparison to when you put the glue on it. The, the fibers start swelling straight away. I'm not really looking up to see what's happening with the chat either at this stage. Holding the inside, that's correct. Great tips. Outside. That's going to do me. Right, pop it on and slide it down. There and there. Bring it over here. I've been framed. <laughs> and on, on, and on. Beautiful, beautiful. And now we'll put the clamps on it. Um, yes. Now the clamps aren't going to be staying there for eons. It's only to pull it up. Actually, it's that way. I need the longer clamps. I'll use the 800s. Maybe just one. Under there. I'm going very, very close to the actual joint. Cool. Just going to let it close up. You hear that? That's brilliant. And then backing off, let it go. And then up just a touch more. Good. Now I'm going to bring the clamps up, the cl just using one clamp, up to the front, spin it around. Pull them up, glue's pulling out, good. Squeezing up, I'll use another clamp there, even though I said I was only going to use one. Because it's such a tall joint. I want to make sure it works. Closing up beautifully. And again. Good. All closed up. That's all closed up down there. Now you'll notice there's a belly in this at the moment. We're going to fix that right now. So undo this clamp, take it off. And this one, take it off. And now we're going to do the sliding dovetails. And then I'm going to pull those up super tight. And that should work. Goes to show that you don't need a mallet to fit dovetails together for giftkins. More clamps, more clamps. Nope. All right. Now, I'm going to put some glue in the bottom of these. That glue's starting to go off, so I may just 
go direct in there and then spread the glue with a brush in there. That'll work. Yep. Now, Cole, you, uh, you like your mallet, don't you? I thought I saw you using it a while back to put in a sliding dovetail. Oh, I better not talk too soon because I might end up having egg on my face. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about uh, not getting the, the show out as, as a public show and having it unlisted and only the Facebook people were watching at the beginning. Trying not to get any up on the inside there as well, because that would be a situation where it might need more stuff happening. All right, this is the sliding dovetail as well. We're going to put a little bit on there, a little bit on there, and A little bit on there. So we're going to put this one in first. <sighs> Hopefully. Lay it down on its back. And <gasps> wrong way around, David. Why didn't anyone tell me? Why is it the wrong way around? The bevel on the front. It's got to go that way. That was fortunate. It would have been ugly if I'd gone in all the way, wouldn't it? And then try to get it out. I would have had to borrow Cole's mallet. Not going down for some reason, Cole. All right. Mallet. Mallet time. Actually, rubber mallet. I've gone too far on one side. I can see it. Block of wood. That block that I was using for sanding. I've got to move quickly because this is going to start, start going off. too far. Nearly there. Flip her over and I can have a look at the other side. That's looking brilliant. Look at that. Okay, having a look at this side and I'm going to see if the rebate's all perfect. This has gone just a touch too far so what I can do is put the block like this and hit it on the back of the back of the rebate and it should pull it all down. It's nearly there. Perfect. And the other side is perfect. All right. Now we're going to do the big shelf. Which is this one. A little bit of glue on here. Don't you love a glue up when someone else is doing it? This will be fine. Now this one's a little bit loose. I know it's a bit loose, so this should go in a little bit easier. And then I have to actually clamp it because 
the bottom of the joint, I kind of got it a little bit wrong. But I think it's going to be okay. Okay, so looking at that, we can't have that way. It's got to be this way around. And we'll slide that in there. And that one in there. There she goes. Spin around this one. I'll use the mallet again. There she goes. Gone too far. Spin her up. And take it back to where it's got to be. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now I've got to put a clamp on that one. I can clamp the outside of the unit now because there's full resistance. And I do need to, as I said, I kind of got it wrong. How can you kind of get it wrong? It's either right or it's wrong. Done. And this one. And now that's going to allow me to also pull the dovetails up if they're not pulled up tight. They're looking pretty good. That one I need to pull up tighter and now I've got to flip it over and do the other side on the tall one. That's pulling the glue out beautifully. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. And I'm going to... That's all good. I'll put another one on there. Just to catch it. Good, 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 good. Now, what I'm going to do is take the camera off here. Um, now, am I or not? Yes, I am. I'm going to bring it over here so I can show you around inside the joints. So here we go. This is going to be an interesting thing. So this, this, see, there's no squeeze out. Using Cole's method, there's no squeeze out there at all on the inside of the box. That's by holding on to the inside of the joint and only putting glue basically towards the outside. Now you notice there's a little bit of glue down here. That's in the rebate. No one's going to see that. Down this side, and this is on the bottom, so I can come around to the other side. This is the top of the shelf where everything will be sitting. I will go around with a hand plane and just clean these off, all of those. See there, there's a little bit. And that'll be lovely. These are the joints on the outside joints on the outside and the only reason that I've got this clamp on here is because I have this which is stopping the whole box deflecting. There we go and have a look at that. It's come up so well. It really has. Okay, how's the time? Just gone 12 o'clock. I'll switch cameras again. Well, that's a great result, except for no one saw it. <laughs>
Oh dear. Not to worry. You can all watch the replay if you want to. Uh, I'm going to read through here. So we had, if your name starts with R and your surname starts with C, you're even, even uh, bigger chance of winning the IMUFs. Do a quick read through here. I'll put them on while I'm reading the, uh, the winner. Okay, but, and also before I do that, I'll read out the Patreon patrons who uh, help bring the show to you. These are a certain level tier, and they get their name read out and a couple of other things. They get a free mug like mine. So if you want one of these, and you want your name read out on the show, and also on the credits, you have to jump into Patreon and join at a certain tier. Um, so it's Johannes Moa, John Parra, Vincent Yang, John Lafferty, Peter Woolworth, Brian Del Vecchio, Justin Bailey, Father Brett Guthrie, Mike Deem, Wayne Cargill, John Lynch, and Trish Monday. So uh, thank you very much for all of those patrons. <clears throat> I'm going to read down through here. The 3D helmet print. Thanks again for that, Nick. Nice job. Thanks, Cole, uh, from New Zealand. Thank you so much for sending that stuff in to me. If you've got stuff like that that you want to, you know, give it a bit of exposure, give me a shout. I might be able to throw it on the show for you. And also, those rocking horses, what do you think of those? Aren't they beautiful? You've got to watch the replay to see them. They're just amazing. From just a hobby to a full-time job, and he's producing exquisite, exquisite rocking horses with manes and everything. Um, okay, so the bandsaw for there, the quick review of the Gifkins jig, which we did, amazing rocking horses, glue up with the digital SLRs place, some video of the process of the inlay, jump in, watch that, and if you're one of my patrons, you can watch the, what's happening here? I moved everything. You can jump into the Zoom meeting, which will start up in a couple of minutes. All right, back up to here. Thank you very much for everyone for watching. Look after yourselves. Oh, the winner, the winner. I did that on both of us. Uh, the winner is Roycroft. Roy, send me an email and uh, you need to choose the colour. If you want blue or green or pink or whatever, send it in and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, I'll get it sent out to you via, I don't send it, um, George from Reptiler, who are the producers of these things, will send it out directly to you. All right, look after yourselves, be nice to each other. And I shall see you all next week. Bye.